Hello, Uta Hagen here. Uh, my artifact of the day is that bud on the daffodil. Uh, at another time soon, my next video, I will show you the little tiny blossoms on my rosemary plant, uh, which has been overwintering in a cold frame, uh, which is like a small greenhouse. Um, I am Uta Hagen of Trans Widow Uta Hagen YouTube channel and WordPress blog, Uta Hagen Grass Widow .wordpress .com. That is always in the notes, and you can contact me to have your story told through my voice and the contact form at the WordPress blog. Uh, I think this is completely apropos and uh, uh, serendipitous that the troll I got today as we head up towards uh, 2,000 subscribers, uh, uh, and so I'm getting a little more attention and therefore once in a while more troll comments. Uh, this comment where I just blocked that person uh, as soon as I read it uh, was, uh, what is it with you? Are you trying to fetishize hate? <laughs> and I think it's really, really telling. Uh, typically when I get um, kind of irrational, illogical troll comments like that. My, um, one of my inclinations, uh, if I was going to answer silly things like that, would be to say, listen, honey, I want you to go back to your homework. I detect that you are a mixed up uh, 15 to 16 year old boy. You need to turn off all those pornography videos. <laughs> and really get down to your science and your math homework. <laughs> so I refused to uh, actually engage with them, and I just do blocking them right away from the channel because I really don't want any of you, my loyal stalwarts and wonderful new subscribers, to get involved in any kind of um, time-consuming uh, back and forth <laughs> with uh, that kind of comment because um, just the concept do you fetishize <laughs> something you know like very clearly this person only saw one thing or got told something about me or something like that because I really don't fetishize anything <laughs> and what we're doing here is we are exposing um, the uh, fetish paraphernal para paraphilia, uh, uh, you know, absurd behavior of our former partners and ex-husbands who wanted us to uh, act out their fetishes you know, with them. Some of us, like me, were told by the therapist that we need to work on this and we need to use special equipment <laughs> called uh, something absurd like a strap-on uh, to do this. <laughs> and uh, some of us were actually subjected to violence while our husband is uh, forcing um, reenactment of some porno pornography scen scenario that he's been watching, like the hypnosissy porn type things. Now, um, uh, and just, you know, just to say very definitively, pornography is really not good for you. It, it does not help you to get into the mood. What it does is desensitize you. It's like eating too much cake and frosting and then when you actually taste the sweetness of a fresh strawberry or some fruit, then it doesn't taste sweet to you because you've been subjecting yourself to really the unhealthy kind. <laughs> so, yes, I am the author of In the Curated Woods, uh, True Tales from a Grass Widow, uh, which is published by iUniverse, 
and I am going to be starting to write uh, the next book uh, f that's specifically focusing on the trans widow testimonies I've been collecting and uh, which I will uh, thematically weave in certain stories as I'm doing in this video to demonstrate the risks that you are taking if you stay with a man like this and um, you know to just expose uh, what's really going on behind closed doors. Um, all too often our ex-husbands are glorified and praised and uh, believed by their co-workers and people that they socially interact with uh, it is believed by people who don't really know them well that they are such wonderful, stunning, and brave individuals and they have just gone through so much pain and agony and so we have to uh, invite them into our sex category. And those of us who have been in closer relationships with them know that, no, they um, unfortunately are most typically narcissists and those who get out of it um, and, and learn to recover from it, detransition or desist, and then recover, uh, typically are saying that they learn to focus on the people outside of themselves. They learn to think about how to help others in this world instead of how to make others constantly focus on and praise ourselves. So this happens to be the difficult subject of question number 10 on my survey, 20 questions to ask a trans widow. And uh, I think this is really proof uh, <laughs> to a troll like that who says that I fetishize hate. I am, in a matter of fact, um, neutral voice relaying the experiences of women who are, have gotten out of relationships with suddenly cross-dressing men who are engaging in a fetish and recruiting the wife or girlfriend to also be a part of those utterly false and uh, deceptive scenarios. Okay, this is Aina Leaf. Now, in my trans widow's testimonies, all of these um, uh, answers to question number 10, did he attack you physically, are in the individual testimonies. But I'm presenting these um, next to each other to just make the point of how we uh, perceive the violence that we are subjected to. Uh, which is about two-thirds of us were subjected to physical and or sexual violence. About one-third of us, I'm not sure if I said that right, one-third of us, 23 out of 57, a little over a third, um, and the other two-thirds of us say no, uh, we got out before anything like that happened. Okay, this is someone in the younger generation in a Western country and uh, she's been treated very badly. This is an incident that was reported to the police that the police later said they could not um, charge him with a crime despite all of the blood evidence, uh, body fluid evidence, and witnesses. <sighs> yes, the first time was him throwing cushions and then books at me as I was on the floor crying, clutching the baby. Now this comes out of their fetishistic uh, rage over not being the mother because they know that they are not the mother. She had just had a baby. Then another occasion when I found porn involving a kink regarding the daughter being raped. This is on his computer. She comes across this. He has apparently left this on his screen. 
He grabbed me from his desk and threw me onto the sofa, causing bruising. As mentioned previously, he also strangled me. I begged him in every way to stop, and he eventually let go at the last second. I know he nearly killed me that night. Then he raped me. That's a different question. Uh... He also attacked our infant at one separate occasion, shaking her leg when she was vocalizing as he tried to change her diaper. Babies do often cry when they're very young when you're trying to change their diaper. That's, that's just the way it is with a new baby. Fortunately, she is absolutely fine, and I know she's over a year now. Uh, police were called, and investigations are ongoing, and unfortunately later she contacted me to say that the police had called and said they decided they did not have enough evidence to charge, which is just the police's way to avoid um, all the Stonewall, ACLU, uh, SPLC type uh, advocacy organizations from uh, doing what they do, which is uh, picket the judge's house. Uh, if there's a jury involved, they get involved in jury tampering. Um, it's, it's very, very aggressive. And so none of the violent acts um, that I have uh, documented have been prosecuted by police. And, uh, you know, that's, as I said, there were 16 violent acts and uh, 23 sexual assaults of the 56 of us. This is one uh, from one of our older um, trans widows. And so this is from um, a couple of decades ago when she took uh, the children to go visit him and realized that he had been growing his hair out and looked pretty ridiculous. Um, and she uh, picked up a scissors that was like uh, kitchen scissors in his kitchen just as an illustration of what she was talking about so that he would pay attention to her, uh, not like in a threatening way, going close to him or attacking him in any way. Um, but it's a good example to um, bring up because you have to protect yourself so that things like this can't be misinterpreted. Um, bring an adult with you. So uh, this is what happened. She suggested that he needed a haircut. <laughs> He flew across the kitchen, grabbed my hand, forced me back against the rough wall, and forced me to drop the scissors. He scraped my leg against the wall, tearing my trousers. He cut and bruised my leg a bit. He was extremely worked up and was saying, I'm going to call the police, over and over. And I said, oh, it's okay, you don't need to do that, we're just going. Uh, <laughs> three weeks later, I got a phone call from the police saying they wanted a chat about the incident. I was a complete novice about criminal law. I turned up alone at the police station and was promptly arrested by an embarrassed young policeman. Then I was driven to another police station and kept waiting for the duty solicitor for four hours while my two children were waiting for me to collect them from school in London. The police refused to let me go to collect my children. They held me hostage effectively. So in despair, incarcerated in a police cell, I crumbled. See, she wasn't able to say what he had done to her. She hadn't gone to the police first and taken photos of all of this in the immediate aftermath so that she could bring up his violence. For the first and last time of my life, I agreed to plead guilty and accept a caution for common assault when it was he who had assaulted me. So we can learn many lessons from uh, both of these experiences, I would say, Basically, if you find out that your husband has been watching this odious pornography, um, hypnosissy porn or violent pornography, it would be well to get yourself out of there as soon as possible. Um, once early in my pregnancy, oh, this is, this is Rex Landy who has given me permission to use her voice. She has a, a YouTube channel under her name, which is uh, quite amusing. <laughs> She's, she's, she's uh, quite the uh, singer, <laughs> and she's quite the poet, making up new words to songs. So I recommend Rex Landy YouTube channel. Once early in my pregnancy, when we argued, he raised his hand to me. I told him to think long and hard about it, because if he didn't knock me the F out, 
with his first strike I'd come at him with everything I had and try to end him. Hand lowered. He expressed simmering resentment for the next five months of my pregnancy. And with a very young infant, uh, in um, light of his continued cross-dressing and spending the family budget on it, on his habit, uh, she left basically in the middle of the night and went back to her native um, New Zealand where it was not easy financially, but at least she was away from him. Now this is Ophelia who stayed together as a pretend les lesbian for 10 years and then was sued for divorce when he figured out that she was uh, kind of getting involved with some man she had met at her work. Um, and, uh, she was too nervous to bring up, we call him, oh, excuse me, <coughs> she, uh, was too nervous to bring up his binge drinking and pattern of rage behavior. Again, she's got a young baby during that rage behavior, and he's uh, insanely jealous of her motherhood, and he's raging and throwing things, and she's hovering over the baby protecting him. So she doesn't mention that. It's, you know, by then 10 years in the past. And uh, she's afraid of what he's going to accuse her of since he's suing for her for divorce on the grounds of infidelity. Um, yeah, so she is thankfully recovered, remarried. Um, I think she and the daughter are doing all right. Um, the daughter is probably getting a little bit too much time with him, and he's doing things like being a foster parent of uh, some autogynephilic young man. <laughs> uh, and and uh, so the daughter is getting exposed to these guys and their, their uh, problem behavior. But I'm, um, I'm thinking she got out of it. Uh, the daughter will probably at some point really gravitate towards her and her new husband's uh, normalcy. Um, oh, this is something that does happen on the, on the West Coast states. Uh, you get pressured by the court to agree to joint custody and equal schmequal visitation, which is every other week, and that is actually not good for the children. I did everything I could to avoid that. Nettie fought long and hard and caused me great um, financial pressure on the legal expenses. And I insisted that while he could have every other weekend, he we could not do every other week kind of a thing. No. Um, okay. So this is Joy. She's another one of our older trans widows, you know, around my age. Uh, and this is where I just want to demonstrate how, uh, you know, you might think back towards uh, his physical behavior towards you and, and recognize it as various kinds of assault. Um, she starts out saying, he's never overtly attacked me, but listen to the details. He's swept me out of bed with his leg. He's six foot one and I'm five foot two under the guise of jumpy leg syndrome. In the latter part of our relationship, he would kick me in bed all the time to the point where it would leave bruises. He'd also scrunch his hand on my stomach, supposedly in his sleep, digging his nails in. And then there were the times when he'd grab and squeeze me like my breasts and backside. It really hurt and it scared me. I used to have to wait until he was using the downstairs bathroom in the evening to go to bed. That way, I could get up the stairs unmolested. So being trapped on the stairs is something that has happened to at least three of us. Uh, there was one very, very violent case um, where it was, it was uh, repeated rapes and things like that. She did get away, um, but he would attack her on the stairs. There's, you know, you're at risk when you're on the stairs. So if he's behind you and he can kind of push you down, and also Tracy Shannon, who does use her own name, um, was pushed down the stairs uh, by her now ex-husband in front of her children. Uh, so uh, uh, our, our older one that I'm just finishing up with here. Uh, so no, he was far too clever to hit me. 
he had to physically abuse me in a way that was plausible and didn't leave marks. He did once punch the wall above my head, which scared the life out of me. I went to stay at a friend's house and told him that he would never do that again in my presence. And that is another one uh, that we have repeated um, episodes of with other women where he punches the wall next to you. So these are the kinds of analyses that I'm doing for my next book, uh, which is going to incorporate all of these trans widows testimonies. It will be called Trans Widow Chronicles, Leaving and Healing. And I'm gonna go out and check on my outside daffodils, do my stick walk, do my, um, very rewarding floor exercises. Check out the wellness movements videos, that playlist, along with the nature videos playlist to just get yourself into uh, the normal frame of mind that you must cultivate. We have to uh, bear witness to these stories, but it doesn't mean that you will let them drag you down. I am just above that, I am gathering in the strength from the natural world and from all of my personal strengths, bringing them in, and that is what we need to do, and that is what anyone should do who is having the distress of um, fantasizing an opposite sex persona, because you won't pass. You can't do it, and this is not some kind of fetishizing of so-called hate. <laughs>